Hey guys and welcome to today's video where I wanted to go through different types of setups and rate them based on various criteria. So the setups we'll be mainly focusing on are the following. So a paper towel setup that contains fake hides and fake plants, a reptile carpet setup which also contains fake hides and fake plants, a more naturalistic setup with some fake hides, some real rocks, but fake plants and a substrate such as cocoa fibre or a bioactive of substrate like earth mix arid and finally a bioactive setup which consists of real rocks wood bioactive substrate cleanup crew and real plants now i believe there are various ways to house a leopard gecko everyone has different budgets different tastes and different skills like let's face it when i first got gizmo when i was 13 years old there is no way i would have been able to build a fully bioactive tank like i have for my crested gecko so even if you start at one kind of setup over the years your tastes and skills may change if there's one kind of setup that I would strongly advise against, it would be keeping your geckos in like a rack system, like in plastic drawers. So though breeders do this, and they do it because you can store more geckos, which means you can breed more geckos and produce more babies and make more money, leopard geckos just simply cannot thrive in that environment. They will survive, they will breed, but honestly leopard geckos can breed in some horrendous conditions. Um, but they're not going to truly thrive in a rack system. So let's leave them to the breeders. We want our leopard geckos to thrive, be healthy and live long, happy lives. So with all that in mind, let's look at the first thing we'll be rating these on. How easy is it to clean? For this, we'll be looking at how often we'd have to clean out these tanks and how easy will it be to do this and keep the environment nice and clean. Now, I'm not going to focus on spot cleaning because you should be doing that daily anyway, regardless of the substrate. So the paper towel setup, I'm going to give this four stars. The reason being is paper towel can easily be removed and replaced within a few seconds. The tank hides and plants can be wiped down with reptile disinfectant or very quickly. Uh, the reason it's not five stars is because you will have to replace the paper towel far more frequently than any of the other substrates. You won't have to disinfect the tank every time, but the paper towel does need replacing. This particular environment is good for sick animals that need to recover in a sterile place or when you're quarantining a new gecko. The reptile carpet setup, I'll give two stars. This is because reptile carpet is known to harbour bacteria. It can also easily be stained by calcium powder, which isn't a massive issue, but it is a bit of a pain. Also, not many people realise you should ideally have more than one carpet, as it needs to be fully washed and dried at least once a week. So if I were you, I'd buy three. So one you're using, one that's in a wash currently drying, and one as a spare. Then we have a naturalistic tank with substrate like EcoEarth or EarthMix Arid. Basically a setup like I have. Now, I'd give this three stars for cleaning. It's good because you don't have to do a full clean often, like only every four to six months you have to take out all that substrate. However, when it comes to cleaning it out, it can be a bit of a faff getting it all out. It's definitely not as quick and easy as paper towel, but a quick tip I do have for you, take some of that old substrate you're about to throw out and sprinkle it on top of the new stuff so when the gecko moves back in, it still smells its own scent and it's less stressed. And finally, the bioactive tank. Now, I'm going to give this four and a half stars. I can only speak personally from keeping bioactive arboreal tanks, but basically they're self-cleaning when you have a good cleanup crew. So your cleaning input is minimal. You'll need to, of course, clean like the water dish, the food dish, the sides of the tanks, and possibly some other surfaces in the tank. But overall, if you have a good system in place, it should care for itself. Now one downside, depending on how you look at it, because personally I enjoy it, but one thing you could maybe consider a downside is maintenance. You of course need to do a lot more maintenance in a bioactive tank, you have to look after the gecko, its cleanup crew and the plants. Instead of going through a whole like rating system of each tank, I want to just quickly list each tank most to least high maintenance. So the most would probably be the bioactive tank, then I'd say the reptile carpet, then a naturalistic, and then paper towel. 
Now let's look at what's most cost effective. So which one will cost you the least to use? This one is a little difficult to determine for sure since prices vary from shop to shop, brand to brand, country to country. So I'm going to try to make an educated guess at this. So paper towel would seem to be the cheapest. However, you have to keep in mind that you'll be replacing it frequently. Therefore, it could get expensive if you're buying, you know, your supermarket, kitchen roll, paper towel sort of stuff. But it could be cheaper if you bulk buy it in really big rolls. For now, I'm going to put this as third most cost effective just because you'll always need new paper towel. Next is reptile carpet. Ideally, as I said, you want two or three carpets. As an example, I am looking at the Zoomed Eco Carpet, the 15 to 20 gallon size, and this is 4 dollars on this particular site. Say you bought three of them, that's around 15 pounds, but they should last you a long time. So I'm gonna put this as second in the most cost effective, as I believe in the long run, they'll work out cheaper. Then we have a naturalistic tank. So as I said, this needs replacing every four to six months. Eco Earth is fairly cheap, but now I do prefer to use Earth Mix Arid, which is a lot more expensive as ideally it is meant to be used in a bioactive tank. Now, if we were using Eco Earth, a three pack should last one gecko about three years because half a brick every six months. So £5.29 in this case divided by three equals £1.76 a year, which I think is fairly good going. Not to mention the eco earth can be recycled in like a compost heap or something, so it's not very wasteful. So for this, I'm going to put this at joint second with carpet. However, if you use something like Earth Mix Arid like I do, and it's not a bioactive tank yet, it will still need replacing every six months or so and therefore it can be very expensive but keep in mind like a 10 litre bag can probably fill two to three vivariums so i'm going to put this one fourth in terms of cost effectiveness but first place for cost effectiveness is a bioactive tank now hear me out because i know setup costs can be very expensive but once it's up and running, you don't have to replace the soil as it's alive with cleanup crew and plants. Therefore, in the long run, it's actually probably one of the cheapest considering how long the geckos can live for. Of course, you may need to top it up a little, but overall, it works out fairly cheap. So now we've covered things that affect us as an owner, so how often we have to clean them out, how much it's going to cost. Now let's look at how beneficial each setup is to our geckos. Before I go through each setup, one thing I did want to say and make you aware of is when using fake hides and plants in our tanks, they do sometimes pose a VOX or VOC risk, which is volatile organic compounds, which is where plastics are heated and they can release uh, these molecules back in the air, which aren't great for our geckos. Now, I can't tell you for sure like what does release this, what doesn't. Um, it's weird that there's still so many plastic hides and plants and backgrounds and stuff if this is really bad for our reptiles. Um, but I do think in the future we will see changes in our hobby and I think this is another reason why people are moving to bioactive tanks just because it's more natural and poses less of a risk. But I don't want to scare you guys because I still have fake hides, some fake plants and fake backgrounds in some of my tanks so, you know, we're all in the same boat. Anyway. How beneficial is a paper towel setup to a gecko? So it can help create a sterile environment with low humidity, which is great, but it also lacks enrichment in terms of various textures to walk over. There's nowhere to dig. And due to the flat, unchanging surface, it may put pressure on joints and muscles. So I would give this three stars. Reptile carpet would probably get two stars. It can look more natural than paper towel, but it can harbour bacteria. There's nowhere for the geckos to dig, and a lot of geckos end up getting their teeth and or nails stuck in the carpet. A loose substrate or a naturalistic tank can provide areas to dig, a lot more enrichment, and also helps to absorb the smell of gecko poop, unless it's like really fresh because then it smells. Anyway, in some cases it can cause the humidity to rise a little and feed insects can bury themselves in it and some geckos do accidentally eat it, but I will give it three stars. 
A bioactive tank can provide clean, fresh air from the plants that live in the tank. There's substrate to dig in, usually various textures like cork, slate and rock, which is great for the gecko. But once again, it could potentially cause a slight spike in humidity, but you'll want to work on having a good airflow in your tank. If you have a mesh lid, for example, you should be fine. I have found in my bioactive tanks, I have for like my crested gecko in Chihuahua, there is a risk of housing pests and spiders seem to particularly like bioactive tanks so that can be a bit of a pain. I don't think it really affects the geckos too much but you never know what could sneak into your tank so you know. Um, also making hides out of rocks can be a little difficult and clunky so it's important when we make them they're nice and stable and won't topple over on our geckos but overall I would give this setup four stars. So I think it's clear that bioactive tanks are the way forward but as i said at the start if you're comfortable with a paper towel setup at the moment that's fine maybe naturalistic or bioactive is something you can aim for in the future equally you can also mix up some of these features to create a really interesting tank some people will use paper towel or carpet or even lino like tiles and have an area for the gecko to dig in some will do this but also have real rocks in there or cork though my tanks aren't technically bioactive they're more naturalistic i still include real rock and cork and varied textures on the floor as well as bioactive substrate so you can definitely mix things up if you wish so i hope this video has helped I'm sorry it was quite long, there's a lot to cover. Um, one thing I would love to know though is if you have a paper towel setup or a reptile carpet setup, naturalistic or bioactive setup, let me know below what are some pros and cons you have found with using your particular setup. But anyway guys, I hope this video has helped. If you haven't already, please subscribe. But thank you for watching and goodbye.